We're going to start with breaking news from Burkina Faso, where the army has seized control of the country. Within the past half hour, a group of soldiers have appeared on state television to say they've ousted President Roche-Marc Christian Kabori. They've suspended the constitution and they've dissolved the government. The ruling party said earlier the president had survived an assassination attempt. Gunfire erupted early on Sunday when soldiers took control of a major military barracks in the capital. Some civilian protesters rallied to support the military intervention. Well, the unrest stems from frustration in the battle against armed groups affiliated with ISIL and Al-Qaeda. Soldiers have been demanding better resources to combat them. Attacks have killed around 2,000 people and forced 1.5 million from their homes. When Henry Wilkins is joining us on the phone from the capital, Ouagadougou, Henry, just talk us through everything that's been happening over the last few hours because it's been very fast moving. Yeah, absolutely. So um, all day today, uh, we've been waiting for an announcement from the likely new leaders of the uh, of the country. Since this morning, uh, the, the the state broadcaster has been under con under the control of these uh, the, what were mutineers as of Sunday, but. Um, uh, yeah, we didn't get any information throughout the afternoon, and then uh, about an hour ago, Reuters began to report that the president had resigned, resigned, and within minutes of that, uh, military troops appeared on the national broadcaster to announce that the the government has been re uh, has been dissolved. We also had a statement um, in the last couple of hours from the uh, former ruling MPP party to say that the president had. Uh, survived a, an assassination attempt uh, either earlier on, on Monday or on Sunday night. Henry, thank you very much indeed for talking to us from Wagadougou and bringing us up to date with that situation. Henry Wilkins there. OK, we're going to speak now to Nicholas Hack. He's joining us live from Senegal's capital at Dakar. One would imagine that this is going to have significant ramifications for the, the whole region. Talk us through what you're aware of how the, the members, for example, of ECOWAS are reacting to all of this. Make no mistake, there are negotiations taking place between West African nations and the new uh, strongman that's in charge of Burkina Faso that's, uh, made, uh, that, that signed the announcement made on national TV. TV. His name is Lieutenant Colonel Paul-Henri Wagoyuro Sandogo Damibe. He is now the new strongman. He's in charge, uh, and, and there are negotiations in place. The EU wants to see the immediate release of Roque Marc Caboret, the elected president. Um, the, Afri the ECOWAS, the African, Un African Union, want to see the military return to their barracks, and they want to see Roque Marc Caboret, or an elected official, take charge. It's a very confusing situation currently in Burkina Faso, despite this announcement made by the, 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 the coup leaders of the mutineers. The reason being it's so confusing is because at stake here is the, the stability of Burkina Faso. Remember, this is a place where armed groups are active, armed groups affiliated to ISIL and Al-Qaeda. Rob? And that's going to be a key point, isn't it? Because if there is a lack of stability and a lack of security um, in Burkina Faso, those armed groups, one would imagine, are going to be looking at that and seeing whatever opportunities they might be able to take in this current situation. Exactly. A weak central government or a government not made of elected officials plays into the hands of armed groups that are active in the north and then the east of the country. Remember, that's what they've been trying to fight off is a democratically elected government in Ouagadougou. So this situation really plays into the hands of armed groups that are currently active in the region. It's also uh, it comes at a time where there's been an increased attack. Remember, 3.5 million people in Burkina Faso are in need of urgent humanitarian assistance. More than 1.5 million displaced, most of them are children. These are staggering numbers, numbers that weren't like that a couple of years ago. But what you have to see in the background of this is the instability, the political instability, or the lack of ability from uh, the, pre the president or the former deposed president in trying to deal with the ongoing security situation. Now, there was the turning point in November, Rob, when there was an attack on some of these troops in the, in, in the region of Ina 
that uh, where uh, 50 people had died, 20 of them were soldiers, soldiers that had gone without food rations for over two weeks, that were ill-equipped, and, and that caused public outcry. What Rockmar Cabaret did was um, try to ban or censor the protest, uh, denouncing the mounting insecurity, instead of focusing on the security situation in the north. What's interesting about this new strongman, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Paul-Henri uh, Sandogo Damibi, he used to be, and he was promoted as a commander to, uh, to the north of Burkina Faso by the president himself. He had written a book about uh, questioning the, the situation between West African armies and armed groups in the area. It's someone that's been on the front line that has seen the casualty um, caused by the war uh, going on in this region of uh, the borders of Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. So someone that has an element of support from many soldiers among Burkina Faso's army. Mm. Rob? Nick, we've seen a surge in military takeovers across places like Ghana and Chad and Mali and Sudan. The African Union, ECOWAS and the other African nations must have been very concerned which was next to fall. And it does seem as though Burkina Faso uh, is that one. Uh, is there any indication, you alluded to it slightly in your first answer, is there any, any indication that there is going to be more sort of um, intervention or more at least talks with, as you say, the new, what is perceived to be the new leadership of Burkina Faso? Or are people just sitting back at the moment and waiting to see what happens next? This is a particularly difficult situation for France, the former colonial power. It has its special forces on the ground not far from the airport of Ouagadougou under the op op Operation Sabre. In fact, there was a French soldier that was wounded alongside uh, Burkina Faso's military just earlier uh, last week. And so they have troops on the ground in Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is also a key ally a, and a key contributor to the fight against armed groups in neighboring Mali. There's a G5 Sahel, a coalition of armed groups in which Burkina Faso is also part. So, I mean, it's particularly interesting for France, given that there are, as you mentioned, three military successive coups in a region, all of them three former French colonies in Guinea, in Mali, and now in Burkina Faso, where we're seeing a step away from democracy. But for many in Burkina Faso, this military takeover is seen a step forward for security in the region. Mali leading the way in many ways. Many observers in uh, West Africa see the steps taken by Mali, which is to move away from France and closer to other superpowers, such as Russia, Russian mercenaries, or Russian fighters are currently active in Mali. Well, they see that as the right move forward. They see that the current status quo of engaging with France and with key allies isn't bringing them more safety. In fact, it's making the situation worse. So there needs to be a new uh, plan of action, both for the new leadership in Burkina Faso, but also for their key ally, France, in the fight against armed groups in the region that continues to gain ground. Rob? It's Nicholas Hack talking to us from Senegal's capital, Dakar, about uh, the announcement from Burkina Faso that soldiers say they are now in charge of the country.